Okay. So, ngayon, we'll be discussing about the OSI model. It is part of the network architecture. No? Uh, tapos na tayo dun sa network nat uh, yung about sa cabling, about sa topology, about sa ne basic network. So, so, let's go to this OSI model. Okay? So, So, ano po ba yung uh, OSI model? Kung gaano ba siya napaka-importante with regards to the network architecture. Okay? Uh, when you say OSI model, it is a open system. Interconnection model is a conceptual framework used to describe the functions of a networking system. Kung baga, ito yung uh, procedures, di ba? Paano, paano ang nagta-transmit yung isang layer hanggang sa ma-reach niya yung pinakadulo na layer para ma-transmit yung data. Okay? So, hanggang sa makita ng mga end users natin. So, the OSI model characterizes computing functions into universal set of rules and requirements in order to support interoperability between different products and software. So, the communications between the computer Systems are split into seven, which is uh, from physical layer hanggang application layer. Kasi yung mga physical layer natin, ito yung mga ginagamit natin network devices. Hanggang sa application layer, ito yung uh, nakukuha na natin, nare-reach out na natin through our software, which is yung search engines natin, okay, so mga mobile apps, which is um, through the use of internet, okay? nakakaroon tayo ng access through the application layer. So, ganun yung pagdadaanan. So, physical, dadaan sa data link, network, transport, session, hanggang sa application. That's the procedure. Okay? On how the OSI model works. So, it was also created by 1984 by the International Standard Organization. Okay? Uh, ISO. So, usually... Ang ISO sa buong mundo, sila yung nag, uh, nagsa-standardize, okay, ng mga uh, uh, sta, uh, net, um, ng, batawag dito, ng mga in, in different kinds of industry, okay? For example, sa network, merong um, ISO standards when it comes to OSI, okay? May mga standards din regarding sa, sa software engineering, may mga standards din sa management. So, marami. So, they are under the OSI. Kung pag-aaralan natin yung International Organization for Standards. Okay? So, though, though it does not always map directly to the specific system, the OSI model still used today to describe the network architecture. Okay? Para makita natin, uh, kumbaga, uh, layer by layer, paano ba, yung, uh, paano ba yung responsibilities nila, paano yung roles nila, paano yung ginagawa nila para ma-reach out natin dito hanggang sa application layer. Okay, so now I'll be previewing a video regarding the OSI model. This is DG. Today, we are going to learn about OSI model or Open System Interconnection Model. So let's start. OSI model defines and is used to understand how data is transferred from one computer to another in a computer network. In the most basic form, two computers connected to each other with LAN cable and connectors sharing data with the help of network interface card forms a network. But if one computer is based on Microsoft Windows and the other one has Mac OS installed, then how these two computers are going to communicate with each other? In order to accomplish successful communication between computers or networks of different architectures, seven-layered OSI model or Open System Interconnection model was introduced by International Organization for Standardization in 1984, containing application layer, presentation layer, session layer, transport layer, network layer, data link layer, and physical layer. Note that each layer is a package of protocols. If I say application layer, then it does not mean that it includes computer applications like Chrome, Firefox, etc. But it includes application layer protocols that are needed to make these applications work correctly in a network or internet. Let's start with the topmost layer, application layer. Application layer is used by network applications. Network application means computer applications that use internet like Google Chrome, Firefox, Outlook, Skype, etc. Web browser is a network application running in your PC. 
it does not reside in the application layer but it uses application layer protocols http or https to do web surfing not only web browser but all network applications including outlook skype etc all are dependent on application layer protocols to function there are dozens of application layer protocols that enable various functions at this layer all these protocols collectively form application layer these protocols form the basis for various network services like file transfer web surfing emails virtual terminals etc file transfer is done with the help of ftp protocol web surfing is done with the help of http or https protocol for emails smtp protocol is used and for virtual terminals telnet is used so application layer provides services for network applications with the help of protocols to perform user activities next to application layer is presentation layer presentation layer receives data from application layer this data is in the form of characters and numbers presentation layer convert these characters and numbers to machine understandable binary format for example conversion of ascii to abcd code this function of presentation layer is called translation before data is transmitted presentation layer reduces the number of bits that are used to represent the original data this bit reduction process is called data compression and it can be lossy or lossless data compression reduces the amount of space used to store the original file as the size of file is reduced it can be received at destination in a very less time that is data transmission can be done faster thus data compression is very helpful in real time video and audio streaming to maintain the integrity of data before transmission data is encrypted encryption enhances the security of sensitive data at sender side data is encrypted and at receiver side data is decrypted ssl protocol or secure sockets layer protocol is used in presentation layer for encryption and decryption so presentation layer performs three basic functions translation compression and encryption decryption now session layer suppose you have planned for a party you have hired a few helpers ensuring that each activity runs smoothly helpers will help you in setting up assisting cleaning and then closing the party same is the case with session layer session layer helps in setting up and managing connections enabling sending and receiving of data followed by termination of connections or sessions like you hired some helpers for your party session layer 2 has its own helpers called apis or application programming interfaces NetBIOS or Network Basic Input Output System is an example of APIs which allows applications on different computers to communicate with each other. Just before a session or a connection is established with the server, server performs a function called authentication. Authentication is the process of verifying who you are. For this, server uses a username and a password. Once entered username and password are matched, a session or a connection is established between your computer and the server after authenticating the user authorization is checked authorization is the process used by server to determine if you have permission to access a file if not you will get a message saying you are not authorized to access this page both of these functions authentication and authorization are performed by session layer session layer keeps a track of the files that are being downloaded For example, a web page contains text, images, etc. These text and images are stored as separate files on the web server. When you request a website in your web browser, your web browser opens a separate session to the web server to download each of these text and image files separately. These files are received in the form of data packets. Session layer keeps a track of which data packet belongs to which file, either text file or image file. and tracks where the received data packet go in this case it goes to web browser that is session layer helps in session management so session layer helps in session management authentication and authorization your web browser performs all functions of session presentation and application layer layer below session layer is transport layer transport layer controls the reliability of communication through segmentation flow control and error control In segmentation, data received from session layer is divided into small data units called segments. 
Each segment contains a source and destination port number and a sequence number. Port number helps to direct each segment to the correct application and sequence number helps to reassemble segments in the correct order to form correct message at the receiver. In flow control, transport layer controls the amount of data being transmitted. Consider our mobile is connected to a server. Suppose server can transmit data maximum at 100 Mbps and our mobile can process data maximum at 10 Mbps. Now we are downloading a file from the server but server starts sending data at 50 Mbps which is greater than the rate our mobile can process. So mobile phone with the help of transport layer can tell the server to slow down data transmission rate up to 10 Mbps so that no data gets lost. Similarly, if server is sending data at 5 Mbps, mobile phone tells the server to increase data transmission rate to 10 Mbps to maintain system performance. Transport layer also helps in error control. If some data does not arrive the destination, transport layer uses automatic repeat request schemes to retransmit the lost or corrupted data. A group of bits called checksum is added to each segment by the transport layer to find out received corrupted segment. Protocols of transport layer are transmission control protocol or TCP and user datagram protocol or UDP. Transport layer performs two types of services, connection oriented transmission and connectionless transmission. Connection oriented transmission is done via TCP while connectionless transmission is done via UDP. UDP is faster than TCP because it does not provide any feedback whether data was really delivered whereas TCP provides a feedback therefore lost data can be retransmitted in TCP. UDP is used where it does not matter whether we have received all data for example online streaming movies, songs, games, voice over IP, TFTP, DNS etc. On the other hand TCP is used where full data delivery is must. For example, World Wide Web, Email, FTP, etc. So, transport layer is involved in segmentation, flow control, error control, connection oriented and connectionless transmission. Transport layer passes data segments to the network layer. Network layer works for the transmission of the received data segments from one computer to another located in different networks. Data units in the network layer are called packets. It is the layer where routers reside. The function of network layer are logical addressing, routing and path determination. IP addressing done in network layer is called logical addressing. Every computer in a network has a unique IP address. Network layer assigns sender and receiver's IP address to each segment to form an IP packet. IP addresses are assigned to ensure that each data packet can reach the correct destination. Routing is a method of moving data packet from source to destination and it is based on the logical address format of IPv4 or IPv6. Suppose computer A is connected to network 1 and computer B is connected to network 2. From computer B we have requested to access facebook.com and now there is a reply from facebook server for computer B in the form of packet. This packet needs to be delivered to computer B only. Since in a network each device has a unique IP address so these both computers will be having a unique IP address as well. Network layer of the Facebook server has already added sender and receiver's IP address in the packet. Suppose mask use is 225.225.225.0. This mask tells that the first three combination represents network while the last combination represents host or computer B. So based on IP address format, received data packet will move first to network 2 and then to computer B. So based on IP address and mask, routing decisions are made in a computer network. Now path determination. A computer can be connected to internet server or a computer in a number of ways. Choosing the best possible path for data delivery from source to destination is called path determination. Layer 3 devices use protocols such as Open Shortest Path First, Border Gateway Protocol, Intermediate System to Intermediate System to determine the best possible path for data delivery. Data Link Layer receives data packet from network layer. Data packets contain IP addresses of sender and receiver. There are two kinds of addressing, 
logical addressing and physical addressing. Logical addressing is done at network layer where sender and receiver's IP addresses are assigned to each segment to form a data packet. Physical addressing is done at data link layer where MAC addresses of sender and receiver are assigned to each data packet to form a frame. MAC address is a 12 digit alphanumeric number embedded in network interface card of your computer by your computer manufacturer. Data unit in data link layer is called frame. Data link layer is embedded as software in network interface card of a computer and provide means to transfer data from one computer to another via a local media. Local media includes copper wire, optical fiber or air for radio signals. Please note here media does not correspond to audio, video or animation. It refers to the physical links between two or more computers or networks. Data link layer performs two basic functions. It allows upper layers of OSI model to access media using techniques such as framing. It controls how data is placed and received from media using techniques such as media access control and error detection. Consider two distant hosts, a laptop and a desktop communicating with each other. As laptop and desktop are connected to different networks, so they will be using network layer protocols, IP for example, to communicate with each other. In this example, desktop is connected to router R1 via an Ethernet cable. Router R1 and R2 are connected via a satellite link. And laptop is connected to router R2 via a wireless link. Now, desktop wants to send some data to laptop. Based on the medium used to connect desktop and router R1, data link layer adds some data in the head and tail of IP packet and converts it to a frame, Ethernet frame in this case. Router R1 receives this Ethernet frame, decapsulates it to an IP packet and then encapsulates it again to a frame so that it can cross satellite link to reach router R2. Router R2 will again decapsulate the received frame and encapsulate it again to form a wireless data link frame. Laptop receives this wireless data link frame, decapsulate it and then forward IP packet to network layer. Finally, data arrives application layer. Application layer protocols then make the received data visible on computer screen. So, network layer or higher level layers are able to transfer data over media with the help of data link layer. That is, data link layer provides access to media for higher layers of OSI model. Data link layer also controls how data is placed and received from the media. The technique used to get the frame on and off the media is called media access control. There may be a number of devices connected to a common media. If two or more devices connected to same media send data at the same time, then there may be a possibility of collision of the two messages resulting in a useless message that neither recipient can understand. To avoid these situations, data link layer keeps an eye on when the shared media is free so that device can transmit data for the receiver. This is called carrier sense multiple access. So data link layer with its media access control methods controls data transmission. Tail of each frame contains bits which are used to detect errors in the received frame. Errors occur due to certain limitations of the media used for transmitting data. The last layer is physical layer. Till now, data from application layer has been segmented by transport layer, placed into packets by network layer and framed by data link layer, which is a sequence of binary zeros and ones. Physical layer converts these binary sequence into signal and transmit over local media. It can be an electrical signal in case of copper cable or LAN cable, light signal in case of optical fiber and radio signal in case of air. So, signal generated by physical layer depends on the type of media used to connect two devices. At the receiver, physical layer receives signals, convert it to bits and pass it to data link layer as a frame. Frame is further decapsulated as data moves through higher layers. Finally, data is moved to application layer. Application layer protocols makes the sender's message visible in the application in the receiver's computer screen. In this way, OSI model is helping to transfer data between distant hosts. So, these seven layers of OSI model are lying behind the smooth functioning of internet. If you have learned something from this video, then please like
Okay. So, yan yung explanation regarding this OSI model. So, uh, expand lang natin ng konti. So, konting recap lang. Langit natin, ha. Okay. So, yung application layer, so more on kung ano yung nakikita natin sa computer natin on the screen. We uses the search engines, application, okay? Pero para mapa-work out natin yan, ito, for example, para makapag-Google Chrome tayo, it through the use of the internet. Para tayo makapag-Zoom, okay, kailangan din ng internet protocols, which is yung telnet, okay? Yung sa, dito, yung sa Google Chrome, sa Firefox, Uh, we use HTTP. Kaya nakikita natin doon sa website natin, may HTTP. That's the internet protocols natin when it comes to that. Okay? So, yung mga SMTP, single mail transfer protocol, it's used for the accessing to the emails natin. So, that's the application layer. So, next naman natin is the presentation layer. It should, it's, uh, it's part of the data compression kasi di ba nagsurfing tayo. And syempre, yung transmitting of data noon, it should be... Uh, Uh, encoded by also um, compressed and then pagka nagsisend tayo ng data it's, uh, it can be decrypted and encrypted okay so yung segments niyan will be uh, will be down to the ay yung yung ano niyan yung yung layer na to will be turned down to the session layer okay which is yun nga yung number one is authentication no kung yung person eh for example um, we are Uh, connecting to a network, okay? So, may mga authentications doon kung pwede ka maka-access doon sa servers na yon, okay? Or you can access, for example, sa Facebook kasi syempre sa mga servers yan, yung authentication. It's all, uh, it's all about the uh, session layer natin. Okay? Yung segments yan will be turned down to the transport layer. Okay? So, ito, it breaks the segments. It's responsible for assembling the segments to the end. Okay? So, and after that, will be turned down to the network player. So, hinga ng um, IP, yeah, internet protocol address, which is IP address para makakonect na sila doon sa ating physical layer. Okay? So, yun yung IP address, yung 192.168, so to connect with the servers. Okay? So, kung makikita natin, it's mabilis lang yung ano niya, pero kung titignan natin sa malaliman, No, through this through this layer, through this procedure kung paano siya nagfo-flow. Okay? So data link layer ayan, it uses MAC address, no? It connects the two physical connected nodes to a network, okay? It's um its layer is composed of logical link control, okay, and the MAC address. So 'yan yung we work out with the data link and then will be connected into the physical layer okay so lahat sila yung mga data transmission through the use of the binary numbers and mag um, nagco-convert yan through our transmission and of course sa physical layer depende yan kung anong gamit okay so yung fiber cables yung mga uh, lan cables okay and of course sa mga uh, transmitting device natin para uh, magkaroon ng access ang mga tao. Okay? Advantages of OSI model when it comes to help users and operators of the computer networks. So, letter A is to determine the required hardware and software to build their network. Okay? More on specification. Understand and communicate the process followed by the components and communicating across the network. And number three, perform troubleshooting. So, in case of errors, identify which network layer is causing an issue in focusing efforts on that layer. So, makikita na doon kung ano yung possible na dapat i-troubleshoot when it comes to uh, errors. Usually yan sa end user, ito naman sa manufacturers. So A, create devices and software that can communicate with products for any other vendor allowing open operability. So ngayon kasi, when it comes to good that, no, nag innovate tayo ng, ad, ng bagong ano, which is mas madali ngayon sa tao makapag-access, okay? makapag-configure. B, define each parts of the network and their products to, should work with. And letter C, communicate to users which network layers their product operates. For example, application layer across the stack. So, yan yung una natin, which is the OSI model. But at this time goes by, dahil through the use of the internet models natin, so pumasok ang TCP IP, okay? Which is, ito na yung um, pinaka mas maikli na network layer okay yung procedure niya so kung makikita natin dito yung sa TCI IP model 
di ba yung first three layer which is yung presentation, application session layer is pinag isa yan as a application layer which is naka-encapsulate dito yung HTTP, SMTP, Telnet, lahat ng application na meron tayo. So lahat yan yung work on authentication, more on um, data compression, and yung na-review po natin. Iisa na lang siya. And then after that, through the use of the transport layer, which is yung nihingi yung TCP. Okay? And then bababaya sa network layer, kinakailangan ng IP address. Okay? And then pag bumaba na yan, which is yung Uh, data link sa physical layer, magkasama siya sa network access layer, which is kailangan na Ethernet. Okay? So, talking ring. So, ATM, frame relay, lahat po yan. Lahat ng protocol nandyan din sa network access layer. Okay? So, in explanation with that, the transfer control protocol or internet protocol is older than OSI model. So, kasi mas... Sorry, mas expand pala si OSI natin. Okay? So, OSI was created by the U.S. Department of Defense as a key difference between the models that is TCP, IP is simpler, no, collapsing several OSI layer. Kumbaga, um, mas pinadali siya ng konti. Kasi magkakasama naman sila no, the, same, uh, the same way. So, OSI layers 567 combined into one application layer. Uh, layers 1 and 2 are combined into network access layer and TCP IP ever. However, it does not take responsibility for sequency and acknowledgement function leaving this under, underlying transport layer. Okay? So, may the other pa tayo in, uh, differences. TCP IP is a functional model designed to solve specific communication problems based on specific standard protocols. Uh, OSI naman is generic. It's independent model, protocol independent to describe all forms of network communication. Kaya siya sobrang dami. Okay? In TCP IP, most applications use all layers while OSI do not use all seven layers. Only one, two, three are mandatory to enable data communication. Okay? So, yan yung um, TCP IP model natin, which is apat na lang siya, which is number one, application layer, transport layer, internet, and network access model. Okay? So, to explain with that, so, yung kalahati na uh, ito, yung about sa ating TCP IP. Okay? So, first of all, the OSI and TCP IP models, application, presentation, session, transport, network, data link, and physical, this is the hierarchical structure of the open systems interconnect model uh, or the open systems interconnection model. Uh, and um, and you, you want a mnemonic to memorize it. So, the first time I taught this class 17 years ago, Uh, one of the students said their mnemonic was, please do not throw sausage pizza away. And 17 years later, I haven't forgot it. So that's what one of the students came up with. Please do not throw sausage pizza away. So please do not throw sausage pizza away. Physical, data link, network, transport, session, presentation, application. Now, do you have to have this memorized for the CCNA? Absolutely. You need to know what the, the seven layers are. Now, the OSI model was a theoretical model. It's never actually implemented. It's just conceptual. What we actually have is the internet, and the internet is the TCP IP protocol suite, or the TCP IP internet suite of protocols. It's a whole suite of protocols. It's not just TCP and IP. It's a whole giant suite. And we have only four layers. There's the application layer, the transport layer, the internet layer, and the network access layer. We don't talk about numbers. If we're talking about numbers, everybody thinks OSI. So TCP IP, application, transport, internet, and this network access layer, this is oftentimes called the link layer, the link layer. So Cisco calls it the network access layer, but it's oftentimes referred to as the link layer. Layer three, the network layer in the OSI model is the internet layer in the TCP IP model. I'm always good with that. Why? Because this is the layer of IP, internet, IP, This is that layer. Transports, transport, that's the super easiest, okay? And then the session, presentation, and application layer are all bundled into one at the application layer. It does make sense. It makes sense, and I'll show you why. The reason is, at the application layer, whether it's application, presentation, or session, we're just dealing with data here. Your data has not been broken up into bits, yet, into pieces yet. Hasn't been broken up into packets. The data gets broken up at 
layer four, it gets turned into segments. That's where, it, this is where it gets broken up into pieces. At layer four, the, the data is called segments. At layer three, we call the data uh, packets. And layer two, frames. And at layer one, bits. Also, sometimes at layer three, they call, instead of packets, they use the word datagrams. Why? Because sometimes we use the term packets, like with a big P, like it's all broken up into packets. So when they say that, you wonder, hey, are they meaning packets like generically, or are they meaning packets on the third layer? Right? So oftentimes, you have to kind of figure that out. Like sometimes in the reading, when they say packets, they mean the third layer PDU, protocol data unit. The, the unit of data that exists at this layer. Okay. Devices. These layers also coordinate to devices. So at layer one, this is the layer of hubs, network interface cards, wireless access points, but more importantly, layer one is the layer of the media, of the wire. It's the layer of the wireless signals, the fiber optic wire, the ethernet copper cable. It's the the layer of the wire. However, there are devices that function on this layer. A wireless access point, a NIC, a hub, all function at layer one. But a lot of those devices also function at layer two. So notice wireless access point, NIC. At layer two, a device that's specific to layer two would be a switch. A bridge is another fancy term for a, a switch. Well, a switch in the early days was called a bridge. Why? Because it didn't have a lot of ports. It was just two ports in one, out the other, like a bridge, like a bridge over one end, out the other, but it's multi-port a switch. They oftentimes, were, when they first invented switches, they called them multi-port bridges. Then you've got layer three, a router, a multi-layer switch, which is a switch and a router combined, a wireless router, that's layer three device, and then at layers four, five, six, and seven, uh, you know, layer four firewall, layer seven firewall is a sp fancy firewall that can actually inspect packets at the application layer, it can actually look at the programs um, as the packets go across the network. So notice how NIC here and here, wireless access point here and here, so that kind of makes sense, like the network access layer sometimes involves both of them. The NIC exists at this whole link layer. The protocols, so these are the protocols of the internet protocol suite. At layer one, and layer two, let's say, because we're talking about the internet protocol suite, so really, right, we're talking about the network access layer here. Media access control, also MAC addresses. ARP, address resolution protocol, this is the layers of Ethernet. And then there's other things here that you'll need to know about. PPP is a WAN protocol. DSL is a WAN protocol. This is a tunneling protocol. This is wireless Ethernet. This is wired Ethernet. Ethernet is the 802.3 specification. Wireless Ethernet, Wi-Fi, is the 802.11 specification. Do you guys see this Sonnet and SDH? This is fiber optic high-speed WAN stuff. That's, hybrid, that's, a, that's fiber optic backbone. 100 gigs per second, you know, that type of stuff. Um, we're going to learn about CDP and LLDP in this course. HDLC, this is a serial connection. PPP is a serial connection, WAN connection. WAN connection. You guys have to learn ARP, Address Resolution Protocol, massively. Okay, IPv4 and IPv6 we're going to cover. ICMP, this is ping amongst other types of messages, right? Internet Control Message Protocol, and this is for IPv6. IPsec, this is IP security built into the lower layers. This IPsec provides security to packets on the internet at layers 3, 2, and 1. How awesome is that? This is routing protocol stuff. These are routing protocols. You're going to learn them. Then you got TCP and UDP. This is the transport layer right here. This is what my lecture is going to be about that I'm going to record later tonight on TCP. It's going to be cool. Then at layers 5, 6, and 7, we've got these protocols here. These are uh, protocols that the user uses. The user uses a web browser. It's using HTTP. The user puts a domain name into the web browser. It uses DNS client. The user gets an IP address automatically. He's using DHCP client. Uh, you FTP with the FTP client. Telnet with a Telnet client, right? There, there's servers for all of these too, right? You have clients and then you have servers. SSH, you SSH in remote connection. Mail, SMTP. POP is your mailbox. IMAP is a mailbox. A network time protocol. This is simple network management protocols used for managing the network. 
This is transport layer security, which used to be called secure socket layer. The new term for this is TLS. Then we've got uh, BGP, and um, this is Border Gateway Protocol. This is the routing protocol of the internet in between internet service providers. RIP is old school routing protocol. And then SIP, this is used for, for voice over IP. All right, moving on. At the application layer, what, what is the function? Basically, you need to know what each layer does because you're going to get a question multiple choice, let's say, on the CCNA. You have to say, well, they'll say, you know, if the layer does this, which one is it? Is it this one, this one, or this one? All right, well, application layer. Applications, protocols, and services that interface with the end user. So what do we know? These are applications that the end user uses, like a web browser is using HTTP. What about the presentation layer? Well, the data is formatted. It's converted uh, from different formats or converted to different formats. and It's encrypted, decrypted, compressed, decompressed, and sent or presented to the user. And like when I think of the presentation user, when I think of the presentation layer, I think of MIME types, right? Like uh, MIME types to show different data types in emails and stuff like that. Um, then the session layer open, close, and manage a session between end user application processes. So in other words, this is stuff that's built in where the application itself can, you know, basically um, manage that connection or that, that conversation between end users. Open, close, and manage a session between end user application processes. So it's built into this upper layers. And once again, we're talking the application layer in the TCP IP model, but this is Application here, presentation here, session here. Okay, moving on. Transport layer, super important. Facilitates end-to-end -end communications between multiple applications simultaneously. So this is always confusing because when I see end-to-end -end communications to the end user, I think it, sometimes they'll say facilitates end-to-end -end communications for the end user. I think, oh, application layer. No, no. The transport layer services the upper layer because it, it provides ports, and each port stands for a different application. So like port 80 is HTTP the web, right? Uh, port 22 is SSH. Port 21 is FTP. So in MA, by putting these ports here uh, at the transport layer, you know, it facilitates the programs that want to communicate on different ports, and it allows for... Um, multiplexing or multiple services to be sent over the wire simultaneously. Okay. Um, at the transport layer, we can have reliable service or unreliable end-to-end -end data transport and data stream services with TCP, UDP, or an, a newer version uh, is SCTP. That's newer. But mostly we're talking about, in this course, TCP and UDP. TCP is reliable. UDP is unreliable. So like all of those upper layer protocols, like HTTP uses TCP because it needs to be reliable. However, DHCP does not need to be reliable because it just, you know, it's giving out IP addresses and the client's going to keep asking until it gets an IP address. So UDP, uh, use, uh, so HTT, uh, DHCP uses UDP, right? DHCP uses UDP. It doesn't need that same reliability like SMTP mail or HTTP web. All right, connection-oriented, connectionless communications and data stream services, session establishment and termination. So this is another things that are provided. Um, if you're using TCP, it's connection-oriented with a three-way handshake. If you're using UDP, it's connectionless. Um, and data stream services, session establishment and termination. So in other words, you know, we start the conversation and end it um, if it's TCP, that type of thing. The network layer. What do we do at the network layer? Also known as the, well, I'm, this is the name of the network layer. It's also known as the internet layer on the TCP IP model. Provides host addressing IP. This is also called logical addressing. Chooses the best path to the destination in the network. Routing, or I'm sorry, choose the best path to the destination network. Routing. Switch packets out of the correct interface. Forwarding. Maintain quality of service QoS. At the network layer or the internet layer, we can set up quality of service. So like if you have voice over IP, you need more bandwidth, more quality, guaranteed bandwidth. 
If you have video, you need more bandwidth. But if you have an email, well, it can wait a little bit. Who cares, right? But that doesn't work if you have a phone call, right? Then you need more bandwidth. So that's what QoS does. It prioritizes traffic. And those flags or those switches that let you know, hey, these packets need more priority, they're built into this layer. All right, um, connectionless end-to-end -end networking. In other words, we're providing end-to-end -end networking. In other words, IP addresses can be networked across the world, across the internet, and there does not have to be a prior connection. It's just, it's existing without that. Why? Because the connection part, the three-way handshake and establishing the connection, that's handled at the transport layer. So um, IP is known as a best effort uh, connectionless end-to-end -end networking protocol. All right, the data link layer. The data link layer is pretty interesting. The data link layer is the layer of your Ethernet NIC, right? The data link layer is the layer of Ethernet. It's the layer of your NIC, it's the layer of where you have Ethernet cables, and it comes with two sub-layers. The LLC, the logical link control, uh, the LLC, which is 802.2, that's the upper uh, sub-layer, provides services to the upper layers. So the LLC talks to the network layer. The LLC is right here, it's the upper part of the data link layer, it talks to the network layer, uh, provides services to the upper layer. And then the media access control defines how devices access the medium. We're talking here media access control. We're talking about carrier sense multiple access with collision detection for Ethernet that's wired and carrier sense multiple access collision avoidance if it's Wi-Fi. All right. Um, media access control, if it was a token ring network, could involve token passing. But we don't use token ring networks anymore. We use Ethernet networks, right? Ethernet won that war a long time ago. Um, so when we use Ethernet, hosts, computers, end devices have host addressing at layer two. At the data link layer, they have MAC addresses. So if you want to actually deliver data from my computer to your computer, it's going from my MAC address to your MAC address. It's getting delivered to a MAC address. So not only do you need IP addresses to, to navigate over the Internet, right? But when you get to that local area network, when you get to that end network, you need MAC addresses to deliver it, right, on the local area network, on the Ethernet network, right? Now, layer two is not always a local area network. At layer two, we have layer two also with wide area networks. So if we're on a local area network, we're using an Ethernet frame. However, if we're on a wide area network, there's a different type of frame for a layer two frame in a wide area network. So it, it looks different. So, so for once, uh, so for example, um, an ethernet frame in a local area network or a PPP frame, a serial uh, connection on a wide area network. Maybe not a PPP frame, it could be a HDLC frame or it could be a, a different type of frame, but not necessarily an ethernet frame if it's a wide area network. Also, the data link layer provides error checking. In other words, if there's a corrupted frame, why am I using the word frame? Because that's the PDU at the data link layer. Packets at the network layer, P frames at the data link layer. So uh, error checking, right? So if there are bad frames and the, there's missing data, uh, the data's corrupted, the um, data link layer will drop the frame or, you know, it'll see that. And it'll, it can error check and say, hey, this frame's bad. I'm here in the biggest trading floor located in the heart of... All right. I skipped talking about the physical layer because that's the layer of encoding ones and zeros on the wire with electricity or with light pulses uh, if it's a uh, fiber optic or radio waves if it's um, wireless. So I'm not talking about layer one, the physical layer, but you know, fine. All right, another topic in um, this week is encapsulation and decapsulation. In other words, when we're encapsulating, we're making packets, okay? When we're decapsulating, we're taking those packets and putting them back together so we can get the data. So decapsulation, we're getting, we wanna return the packets back to data. Encapsulation, 
we're making packets. So when we encapsulate, we move down the model. In other words, you're using your web browser, you're using an application like a web browser, HTTP, and then boom, it goes down here. When it hits the transport layer, it gets broken up into pieces and the transport layer header is added on. And then the network layer, the network layer header, and then the data link layer, the ethernet frame header, and then the physical layer is turned into ones and zeros. And then it goes over the wire as ones and zeros, uh, electrical pulses of electricity on the wire. When it goes back and reaches its destination, it goes back up the model and gets turned back into data and gets, you know, viewed by the user that requested it or it gets to the endpoint. So that's how it works. So data at the application layer, notice at the transport layer, it gets broken up into pieces. Each piece has a transport layer header and then the data. Header, data, header, data, header, data. So these are the pieces. These pieces are called segments. Then one of these pieces Right here it is, there's the piece, the transport layer header and the data, and then at the packet adds the network header on there. So now we've got source and destination port numbers. Now in the network header, we have source and destination IP addresses. Now at the, this layer, we add on the frame header. So now we've got the data, right? Let's say this is the raw data here that we have. Uh, this is the picture or the email or whatever. We have the transport header with the source and destination port numbers the network header with the source and destination um, IP addresses, and then the frame header with the source and destination MAC addresses. There's also more information in those headers. Those are just the most important components, the addressing. Um, also in the ethernet frame, there is a trailer added, and the trailer will have a hash in there used for making sure that there's no corruption, uh, error checking, right? And then, at, the, uh, at this layer, at the physical layer, it gets turned into bits. So, and this is, represents one packet here, let's say. One packet of ones and zeros. And, right, or, you know, one, at this point, when it gets to here, we'd probably say this is one frame. But anyway, the data turns into a segment. Each segment gets added with the packet. Uh, the packet gets turned in with a frame, and then the frame into the bits, and the headers are added on. This is what enables it to go across the internet and reach the destination because we need the addressing, right? Does your letter reach a destination without a name and address? Zip code? No, it does not. Okay. So, yan yung topic natin regarding the OSI model and the TCP IP model. Okay? So, meron pa bang questions? Okay. 